I'm Ian Fishman and this is The Transcript. This week, The Transcript goes inside a rehearsal of NHS's fall theater production, Proof. Connor McClendon covers the boys' soccer team for Hamped Up and Nell Sanders investigates the creepy clown phenomenon. Hi, I'm Meredith. This week I interviewed Josh Dobro about the upcoming play, Proof. Josh gave us a short backstage tour and talked about his role as a director. Uh, I'm Josh, hi. These are curtains. Uh, this is the vinyl siding that we're going to put up on the set. It's not all painted, but more of it's being painted right now. These are some of the props. Uh, the name of the play is Proof. It's going up October 13th, 14th, and 15th at 7 p.m. and also October 15th at 2 p.m. It's my first time directing anything even close to this major. So there's this woman named Catherine who is suffering from depression. And at the start of the play, her father comes in and consoles her. And it's revealed at the end of that scene that he actually died earlier that week. Uh, so as she's dealing with her own possible problems with hallucinations or uh, possible struggles with mental illness, she's also struggling with her sister, who's come in from New York, and a grad student of her father's, who are both trying to push her in their own separate directions. This place talks a lot about mental illness, it talks a lot about sort of fractured families and this idea of what family is, uh, it talks a lot about trust, and those are all ideas that are very resonant for me personally and are very resonant, I think, for a lot of people in the theater community. And so I wanted to do a play that would reflect the people that made it up. I'm looking forward to seeing how it ends up. I think there's a lot of elements that are done, but there's a lot of elements that aren't. Uh, and once we have everything finalized and we have all of the sound and light and the set is finished and we have props and costumes, and I'm excited to see how it looks and how it changes the play. And I'm excited to see what people think of it, even if they hate it. For this. Hello and welcome to week four of Hamped Up. I'm Connor McClendon and this week we're kicking it with boys soccer. I'm here with Emmett Volkman and Ian Hutchins and we are here to talk about the soccer team so welcome to week four of Hamped Up. Thanks bud. Thank you. So it seems like this team has more injuries almost than the football team does so what have you guys done this season to make sure that you're still be staying competitive even though you're missing a lot of players? Um, I think the biggest part is that we have a lot of really versatile players that can fill in wherever we need them. Like we've had players playing left back, center back, center mid, you know, everywhere, everywhere we need it. So high school soccer seems like it's a much more aggressive style of play than like professional soccer. So who would you say on this team is your enforcer? <laughs> I mean, it's between Sal and Jameson for me. They're both really intense. I mean, they've, they've hurt some kids. I have to go with the same thing, but I want to add JD. He's just a good midfield player. So I get annoyed when I watch the World Cup, and I see guys get carried off the field on stretchers for injuries that clearly aren't that serious. So what team in Western Mass do you think is most similar to a World Cup team? Ooh. Uh, Throwing shots, but Holyoke. Yeah, Holyoke kind of sucks. So you guys had a slow start to this season, but now you're undefeated in league play. You're in the second place, and you have two league opponents this week. So how big is this next stretch for you guys to stay in front in, in your league? This is a huge stretch. We have two league games coming up this week, and one against is Westfield, which is the first team in the league. So we got to go put our hearts into the game. And then Friday, same exact thing. Is there anything else you'd like to add about the soccer team? Come to our games. Yeah, support us. Right. We're good. <laughs> All right, great. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of fun being here. I'm usually yeah. on the other side of the camera. In other sports news, the girls' soccer team currently sits in third place in their league. They are set to begin a six-game home stretch next week. The field hockey team is undefeated in league play, and they are in first place. Both the boys' and girls' cross-country teams had off weeks this week, so they remain undefeated on the season. The golf team is still in last place. And finally, the football team remained unbeaten on the season with a 30 to nothing victory over East Longmeadow this past Friday. The win was especially impressive considering Northampton was missing running back Nick Smith and wide receiver Andy Gregorsevich. Hi. 
I'm Nell Sanders, and this is Tell It Like It Is, where all things controversial are covered. I'm sure you all have heard about the national clown craze, whether through social media, the news, or from Mr. Lombardi's announcement on Wednesday. These red-nosed rascals aren't just clowning around and have left a trail of face paint and terror in the hearts of Americans. So let me break this down for students. The frenzy started in South Carolina in August when children reported that creepy clowns were trying to lure them into the woods. Since then, there have been clown sightings in 25 states and counting. This seems like a hoax, right? Well, mostly. However, some cases are very real and scary. The most extreme case was a stabbing that occurred two weeks ago in Pennsylvania. But don't panic, because NHS and other schools across America have cracked down on everything clown-related. The superintendent, John Provost, even sent out a letter to parents warning them about the situation and not to allow their kids to dress up as clowns in school. So I interviewed some students on their opinions, and here is what they thought. Can you state your name and who you are? Sure. My name is Rachel Stavely Hale. I'm the mathematics department chair. Phoebe Jessup. I'm Ron Seymour. Uh, my name is Samir Ben Rodriguez, and I'm in ninth grade. Uh, I'm Sylvia Shred, and I am a junior. My name is Jasper Kesson, and I'm a senior here. Um, so I'm interviewing students about the clown craze that's going on right now. What's your opinion on clowns? I'm very pro-clown. Um, I've heard that people are afraid of clowns. I'm actually really afraid of clowns. Um, I think it's pretty silly. I feel like it's fake, to be honest. They're entertainment for some people, and then some people get afraid of them. I do know that there's some shenanigans with people dressing up as clowns and terrorizing them. Something to do with some chasing and some knives. Well, it's almost like a social experiment. Do you think that they're fancy or do they actually pose a threat? Uh, I would imagine maybe there's a small number of them that are genuinely threatening. I think that they actually pose a, a threat. I think that they're just trying to kind of pull a stunt. Mostly because of the um, Instagram that I saw where like the bio was, um, we kill kids. They haven't done anything yet, so... This clown case has been one of the many events in 2016 that has caused mass hysteria, panic, and obsession. And this phenomenon isn't the only example of clowns in the media. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Tell It Like It Is. And again, I'm Nell Sanders, and I think creepy clowns are fake as f um, I mean, you know, I draw like I breathe. I draw every day. I've been drawing every day since I was like four. So, uh, really, drawing is just like breathing or talking. It's how I think. It's how I... Uh, it's how I like operate. In school, I, I do it a lot, but it's not even it's not even like I'm getting distracted. It's just like I'm helping myself, you know, taking the information. It's doodling is putting my uh, self uh, subconscious into into the real world. It's it's actualizing the mental, and it's 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 just a way of helping me helping me process information. My name is Jasper Kesson. I'm um. 17. I'm 17, and I go to Northampton High School, born and raised in Florence, Massachusetts, Northampton. I used to use one app on my phone a lot. I would just shift shift around like the color settings until it became a cool design. So, with the name Arctic, initially it was going to be Arctic Death Zone, but I thought that the theme of death was kind of like, it's not like I'm afraid to use death as a theme, like that can be done in a way that's super creative, but I thought that was kind of played out. And I think that Arctic is, you know, um, I, I, I've typed this out before, and, and and the reason why I chose Arctic as a name is because in 2016, so many people from so many different locations have such, like, um, you know, have so many similarities, and so much of what um, inspires us, we all kind of share in a lot of different ways. So, with Arctic, Arctic is a location where there's no population at all and I thought that was cool because it's almost like Arctic has no population. You don't have to be just from one spot because it's about the mindset. What fully got me into it was watching kids who I related to and I thought that I kind of thought similar to, like like-minded people uh, starting to succeed in the field and I was like, you know, I think this field is perhaps for me.
And I've been humbled by it because there's been ways where I thought I would succeed where I've failed, but I think that's awesome. I think that's all part of the process. Failing is sick because, you know, I, it's not like I'm gonna stop. It's not like I'm ever gonna stop. This has been the transcript. Check out nhstechnology.org for more.